Bishop Patrick Byrne was born on October 26, 1888 in Washington, D.C. Son of Patrick James Byrne and Anna Seals, Bishop Byrne attended Holy Family grade school and two years of public high school in his parents' hometown of Auburn, New York. In 1907, he graduated from high school in Washington, D.C. After high school, Bishop Byrne attended St. Charles College and St. Mary's Seminary in Baltimore, Maryland. Upon completion of his theological studies, he was ordained a priest for the Archdiocese of Washington, D.C. at the College of the Immaculate Conception, Catholic University of America, by the Apostolic Delegate to the United States, Archbishop Bozano, on June 23, 1915. With the permission of Cardinal Gibbons, young Father Byrne joined Marinol a week after ordination. In the early days of Marinol, young Father Byrne was a man of energy, imagination, talent, intelligence, tact, zeal, good judgment, and practical ability. He was a jack of all trades and a master of those matters that pertain to God. He supervised the building of the Marinol and Scranton seminaries. He was also rector of both seminaries, editor of the Field of Far, vicar general, and treasurer of the society. In 1923, Father Byrne was chosen to begin the Marinol mission in Korea. After four years, he was named Prefect Apostolic of Poignyang. During his administration, the Catholic population of Korea increased by 25,000, and though Marinol priests, brothers, and sisters were interned at the beginning of World War II, there were sufficient Korean priests and sisters to pastor the faithful. Father Byrne returned to Marinol in 1929 as a delegate to Marinol's first general chapter. On this occasion, he was elected Assistant Superior General and served for a six-year term. Father Byrne began his second mission career when he was sent to open a new mission field in Kyoto, Japan in 1935. Two years later, he was named Prefect Apostolic of Kyoto. Shortly before the war with Japan, he resigned his post in favor of a young Japanese priest. Because of his goodness, his love for the Japanese people, and his many charitable works, the Japanese did not imprison him during the war, but kept him under house arrest at the Takano Church Rectory in the northern part of the city of Kyoto. In 1945, at the end of the war, in the face of the impending American occupation, Japanese rulers requested Father Byrne's assistance. Through the intercession of a Japanese journalist, Miyamoto, Father Byrne was asked to save the Japanese women and exhort the American soldiers to behave with dignity. Father Byrne immediately journeyed to Tokyo from which he transmitted the message to the arriving American troops. General Douglas MacArthur praised his cooperation in these words. In the early days of the Japanese occupation, when everything was in confusion, Father Byrne was of great help to us. He was resourceful and courageous. He was looked up to by everybody. In the same year of the Japanese surrender, Father Byrne was transferred to Tokyo to reorganize Marinol's mission work. In 1947, the Holy See appointed him Apostolic Visitor for Korea. Two years later, he was appointed the first Apostolic Delegate to Korea and was named titular Bishop of Gazera and consecrated Bishop in June 1949. Bishop McDonnell, then Auxiliary Bishop of New York and National Director of the Society for the Propagation of the Faith, was the consecrating prelate. On the night of July 2, 1950, Bishop Byrne was seized by the Communists and put on trial. Refusing to give in, he began the long march to the Yalu River through the old Marino Mission territory. 
In Poignang, Bishop Byrne was subject to another trial and then forced to march to Hanyang Ni. This forced death march lasted for more than four months. Any prisoner who fell out of the line of march was executed. Subject always to poor health, Bishop Byrne fell ill in November 1950. Suffering from beriberi, he succumbed to pneumonia. During the evening of November 24, 1950, resting on the clay floor, among other sick prisoners, Bishop Byrne called together his companions and told them in the whisper of a dying man, After the privilege of my priesthood, I regard this privilege of having suffered for Christ with all of you as the greatest of my life. Father William Booth, Bishop Burns' loyal secretary, gave him absolution the night before he died. Early in the morning of November 25, 1950, Bishop Byrne quietly passed on to his heavenly reward. He sought nothing for himself in life, and he possessed nothing at death save the rosary given to him by a sister, a fellow prisoner. Monsignor Thomas Quinlan of the Society of St. Columban, Prefect Apostolic of Chung Chan, South Korea, and a fellow prisoner dug the grave. He took off his own cassock to clothe Bishop Byrne properly for burial and laid his remains in a pauper's grave without a casket. As Monsignor Quinlan covered the mortal remains with earth, he reached down and withdrew the rosary from Bishop Byrne's fingers. Bishop Patrick Byrne exhibits the best that a Merino missionary can offer. On the night before he died, managing a simple smile, he whispered, to Monsignor Tom Quinlan. Tom, don't be sad. I have always wanted to lay down my life for our faith, and the good Lord has given me this privilege. Look after yourself and the others. <laughs>